Thank you. Uh, uh, today I'm going to present a tool which I'm still developing. Uh, it's called Dead Code, and uh, it is used to find and fix unused Python code. My presentation consists out of, of four parts. Uh, firstly, uh, I will present current state of dot code detection using uh, existing tools. Secondly, uh, I will provide a set of features of dot code package. Thirdly, uh, I will show how to use it. And finally, uh, I will compare two different strategies of uh, detecting unused code. Let's begin with definition of dead code, uh, because there might be uh, different definitions. For me, uh, dead code is uh, no longer used, no longer needed code, which should have been removed, but it was not. So this code is still uh, in the code base. And this type of unused code uh, creates a technical debt uh, because it consumes cognitive capacity uh, because you have to sometimes understand it. Uh, it consumes time because uh, unused code has to be maintained. Uh, for example, when a Python version gets upgraded, you still have to update all your code base, including uh, unused code. And in addition, unused code my, might increase security risks. Um, for example, if unused code brings in outdated dependencies uh, which have security vulnerabilities. So <laughs> uh, that code uh, could be compared with evil agents from the movie Matrix, which are <laughs> waiting to cause you trouble. And we definitely want to get rid uh, of them. I want to share a short story uh, of mine. Uh, once I have bumped into a pull request which contained a new feature, but it also contained an unused class. Uh, probably the author wanted to use this class uh, at first, but uh, he decided not to and forgot to remove it. And uh, I was surprised that uh, this type of unused class has slipped into a pull request undetected because we were using bleeding edge linters like rough with all the rules enabled. This made me curious and led to an investigation. Uh, I have reviewed all the rules implemented in Rough, and there are more than 700 <laughs> of linting rules, and found out that there are only several rules uh, which check uh, for unused code. And those rules are for unused imports, local variables, and unused arguments. So it's only a tiny fraction of all possible unused code cases uh, in a code base. So Rough is not capable of detecting globally unused code at the moment. I have searched for other tools and found the most popular and capable uh, linter called Vulture, which is for finding that code. I tried using it, but I have faced uh, several issues. The main uh, issue was that it, Vulture provided a lot of false positives and there were no ways to tune out this behavior. Uh, if an attribute is added to a, a modal type dic schemer or even in class called meta, this attribute has to be also added to vulture configuration. And this, this adds uh, a 
huge overhead in using this vulture package. Uh, in addition, uh, this package is also capable uh, is only capable to find unused code items, and you have to remove them manually yourself. I tried looking into ways to improve a vulture, but I have concluded that uh, this would require too significant modification. And I have decided to create a new tool called that code. And uh, this dot code tool is implemented in Python, but I think that uh, it might be re-implemented in Rust and integrated into uh, re-implemented in Rust and uh, uh, <laughs> integrated into Rust eventually if it gets recognized. Um, so my tool has uh, three main advantages over Vulture. And these ad advantages are, uh, firstly, uh, it provides a lot of different options uh, to tune uh, the uh, behavior. Uh, second uh, advantage is that it provides slightly more unused code uh, detection rules. And third advantage is that it provides an option to automatically remove uh, unused code. And let's uh, look into more details about these three features. So regarding uh, tuning out uh, the false positives, I have identified uh, three terms uh, which are highlighted in this image. These are name, body, and definition. So now it's possible to ignore a part of a expression or whole expression based on its name, not only the name itself. Uh, another way uh, to ignore uh, code items is by uh, by inheritance or decorators applied, you can list a decorator uh, name or base class, and uh, all subclasses uh, might get ignored. So here we have a simple short configuration example, which tunes most of uh, false positives for Django projects. Uh, it ignores all meta definitions. It ignores uh, bodies of data classes, type dicks, models, and well, in my case, it removed most of the false positives. Dead code supports uh, 13 types of uh, checks and it is possible to disable these checks by uh, writing a no quality assurance comment uh, in line or by specifying these checks uh, per file. There is one check for uh, empty Python files and uh, this check is uh, working only for files which are not using Dunder naming. The final uh, feature is a fix option, which allows to remove those findings uh, from the code base. And also it is possible to use dry flag, which allows to see the diff which would be applied to files, but those files are not getting changed. And sometimes it happens that after a cleanup, file 
becomes empty, and that code removes that file completely. Also, if it's not named using Dunder notation. So how to use it? It is pretty straightforward. You have to install that .code package by running pip install .code command, and uh, you can use CLI uh, command by providing uh, a list of Python files which have to be checked. And here we have uh, a code example which contains a lot of unused code entries which are highlighted in purple. And all of these unused code items are reported uh, in the command line. And if we add minus minus fix option, uh, the output is almost the same, but we get one additional line at the end, which reports that uh, seven unused code items were removed. And the file itself gets updated. Uh, I, I want to once more uh, highlight that it is important to fine tune false positives before applying fix option uh, because uh, used uh, useful code might be impacted as well. So uh, you can use dry option to double check whether all findings are being uh, correctly removed. And it, it is also possible to uh, specify a single file uh, of which diff has to be shown. And uh, it is possible by providing file name uh, to the dry uh, option. So you, even uh, if a lot of files uh, would have to be updated, you can see the diff of a specific file. So let's move uh, to the last part of my presentation, uh, which is uh, about comparing two different strategies uh, of detecting unused code. And in general, uh, detecting unused code is a complex task uh, because uh, abstract syntax tree doesn't provide a relation between used code definitions and uh, 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 and defined uh, code. So both Vulture and that code uh, uses abstract syntax tree, uh, but these two packages have to create this association, this metadata between defined and used code. Uh, themselves. And let's see how a strategy uh, of Vulture package works. So this uh, strategy is implemented in three steps. First step is for finding all defined names. Uh, second step is for finding all usages. And first step is for reporting those findings. So in the first step, we find uh, two names, foo and spam. And these, uh, well, uh, in the simple code example, uh, these findings are correct. And uh, on the fifth line, we can see that uh, foo class and spam method is being used. So used uh, items are also uh, found correctly. Uh, so in, in this simple case, there won't be any uh, findings. But let's complicate this simple example a little bit by adding additional class. This class is bar, and it has a single method, uh, spam. And this method has the same name uh, as a method of foo class. And let's execute those three steps uh, once again uh, in the first step, uh, we'll find foo, spam, and bar definitions. 
And uh, in the second step, we'll find full spam and bar uh, usages. And as a result, nothing will be reported. Uh, even though uh, bar spam method was not used. This is because uh, Vulture doesn't take uh, namespace into account. Uh, let's see another strategy which uh, takes namespace into account. So the same code example uh, analyzed using a different strategy would find uh, full spam and bar spam definitions as a separate entries. And in, in the second step, only full spam usage would be detected. And as a result, bar spam method would be reported correctly. Uh, uh, well, it's important to point out that uh, there are a lot of cases when uh, constructing uh, a, namesp a namespace uh, is hard or even impossible uh, for a usage. So in those cases, uh, that code uh, fall, falls back to Vulture strategy and compares names without taking namespaces into account. And having this more precise uh, way of detecting unused code has a nice side effect, uh, which allows to uh, prune a Python code tree more precisely, and uh, hence allowing to reduce the size of a Python code bundle. And this might be useful when code size is important, for example, when it has to be served uh, in a browser. And let's draw a conclusion here that that code package prevents technical debt from appearing out of unused code. And I hope that this package will be useful to you. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thanks for the talk, Alberto, and thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we can have any questions, and please line up behind the microphone. So this, the, the problem you're solving here seems to be extremely similar to, or maybe identical to, essentially a rename refactoring, the algorithm it would have to do. If I've got a code base, and I've got a name, and I want to rename that name, find the places that have to be modified. Have you considered just leveraging an existing rename refactoring implementation and using that as your detector? Or are they different? Maybe I'm wrong and they're actually different problems, but they seem very similar to me, which is why I ask. Uh, no, I have not considered, uh, but I will. Okay. <laughs> and, and, okay, totally other question is, can you detect unused code that's undetectable, that's unused because of logic? You're detecting unused names, but if I have a chunk of code that can't be reached because the code will never ever get there under any circumstance. Do you detect that as well, or is this purely a sort of name-based dead uh, code detector? Yes, uh, there is a rule for uh, unreachable code, uh, for example, which goes uh, after return statement or any terminal statement, so yes. Oh, uh, so if it, it can, if it can be statically identified as unused, but you don't do any dynamic? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. uh, it is a uh, static code okay. checker. Okay, it's very cool, thank you for Hi. Um, if you have a library, most of the API functions will never be called, so they might be detected as dead code, but um, you can list them uh, under the dunder all um, variable. Is that code um, able to detect these, these functions and don't list them as dead code? If you list your, your functions in the dunder all variable? Uh, I think so. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, I can't answer uh, for, for sure now, uh, but probably it might be a new feature which will be implemented. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, hi, thanks very much for your talk. Uh, so this is also half a feature request, but if you're like seeking to <laughs> close this, like the gaps that uh, rough leaves, maybe it's something we're thinking about. So this is just a toy example of the toy in my head, but it's more about the, the general idea. So say I've got code um, A equals B equals one, like a chain assignment. I then write code that does something with A, I write some code that does something with B, but then I decide to get rid of the code that does stuff with B. Oh, sorry, with, yeah, with B. Um, so this will still technically be used because it is part of the chain assignment, right, which is really just two assignments after another. But clearly, I'm not doing anything productive with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm fairly confident this would go, like, go through the cracks with rough, but it might be worth thinking about these kinds of cases as well because to me that seems like dead code even though it is technically used. Yeah, for sure. Uh it's a good insight, and uh, probably it would be hard to implement those checks, but yeah, definitely it could be added to uh, uh, f requested features. At Thanks for the speech. I have a, a small question. Um, sometimes we have a situations uh, about unused variables that we uh, we don't need, we uh, apply the variable, but it's the value, the returned value of the function, and we don't ch just don't check it. So we need, if we delete the whole, uh, uh, the whole line, it means we will delete an important function, but we need to delete only variable. And uh, is any way how to solve that? Uh, yeah, uh, I have thought about this case. Uh, uh, currently, the whole line would be removed, uh, but uh, I, I'm thinking about an option uh, which would allow to uh, slightly adjust the uh, execution, uh, and it would allow to remove only the assignment, the variable, but uh, leave the function call as it was. Thanks. Hello, these next three questions are from our remote attendees. So the first one is, what are your thoughts on classifying code that is only temporarily dead? Real world example. Customer asks us to remove a third party API, but they ask to enable it, and enable it again after one year. During this time, we have done refactors around the surviving third parties, potentially simplifying due to less moving parts. If we remove the feature, we have to redo a little bit more work to reenact it. Do plus one refactor abstract abstraction etc. Uh, if we keep it alive, it costs more than more to do those refactors, but less time to re-enable re the future. Where is the borderline? Well, probably uh, the answer is it depends. It, it would be possible to kind of not apply uh, that code. Uh, fully for those uh, places where uh, it is expected that code will eventually be used once again. But as a good practice, uh, it, as we kind of try to keep uh, only working code uh, in our code base, uh, it would be possible to use Git to restore uh, that removed code later. Okay, here's a second question. Uh, why did you decide to write an, o write an own package project to solve the problem instead of adding missing, lacking functionality to rough, pilot, etc.? May that code be someday integrated into existing linters? The main reason was that uh, I'm now able to prototype and experiment way uh, more flexibly and faster, and uh, I kind of try to imagine how a modification of Vulture package would look like, and uh, it seemed that uh, uh, I had to add a like, double amount of code than there was in Vulture package, and uh, some of those changes were breaking, so I kind of uh, decided that it is way easier to 
create a new tool uh, instead of trying to fight uh, the owners of Vulture package. And uh, I'm currently prototyping and trying to standardize this procedure. And when it's done, when uh, that code package is stable, uh, I'll probably try to migrate the logic into existing linter, uh, most likely to rough. And I saw that there is a etiquette uh, in rough uh, GitHub page, uh, which uh, discusses uh, uh, an, uh, an interface for uh, external developers to write their own plugins. So I hope that this interface will be created and we'll be able to kind of create plugins for Ruff. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.